Robinson. Oh yeah. We're going to talk about No Man's Sky, which is a game that unusually we've both played at this stage. Yeah, you let me touch the controller. That's yeah. Nice <laughs> Why should you play more than me? Uh, we, yeah, in total probably like around an, almost an hour. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It was quite generous uh, the time we had of it. Well, you say that, but No Man's Sky is a game that is so... <laughs> I mean, this is part of the difficulty in, in talking about it. It is massive. Yeah. And it is quite a few different things and... We're going to have to try and figure out how to how to actually define who, who it's for. That's going to be the point in this video. But I think to start with, maybe, shall we actually explain what we did in that kind of hour? Yeah, because like so much of the conversation around this game since it was unveiled in 2013 has been about 
what is it? Like, yeah. What are you actually doing? Here? Yeah, it all looks um, very impressive, but what what is? Yeah, I know, doing? and it's weird because it's been there front and centre. It's been all along. Like uh, Hello Games um, haven't been shy in saying what it is. In fact, I think they've gone to lengths to basically say, look, this is what this game is. Yeah, this is what from his like this is and, it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's and I think it's a kind of failure of imagination on our behalf that we've keep on going. But what is it you actually doing this game? What sure. is it? It's like no, we've told you. What is it you actually do? It's like no, we have told you. And I went back to that original um, trailer from 2013, and it's all in there. Like, mm-hmm. everything's in there. It's got the crafting system. It's got this kind of weird wanted system with this, the sentinels that come after you. Um, it's got the exploration, which I think is what people have kind of uh, really latched onto yep. with this. But that's all there. But um, but even then, even though it's been described to us so many times before, this did feel like the first time where it kind of really crystallised, basically. From yeah, the, I mean, exactly this, this, this was the, probably the first and only hands-on that we're going to get with the game yeah. uh, ahead of actually reviewing it. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it was it was interesting. I think we both went in with different levels of expectations. Both came out of it pretty impressed. Yeah, because I kind of, I think after after so many years of hype um, and and being excited about it, that can, you can only help but kind of set yourself up and go, actually, you know what, probably best to set my expectations quite low um, going yeah. into this. But my, my low expectations were, <laughs> were uh, surpassed uh, and then some. Obviously, the there is this main objective in the game. It's not necessarily one that everyone will pursue, but you, you move towards the centre of the universe yeah. and everyone starts in, I think, a unique position somewhere quite a distance away from yeah. that point. And we did that in the, in the demo. We started on a planet and... We kind of skipped the tutorial. Um, apparently, the, the game will have a little bit more of that. We were kind of just dropped into it just to have a muck around. And that's exactly what we did, actually. Both you and I, I, I realised pretty early on, weren't that interested in the, the combat side of the game. You're given a gun to shoot people with or to mine things with. We didn't do... I don't think I shot a single thing, actually. I know I, there, was a, there, was, there was a one platypus. I, was... shot, I shot something to upset you at one point, I remember that. But really, yeah, that, for, <laughs> for me, that wasn't a huge priority. It wasn't, it wasn't the, the most interesting part of the game. It, for me, it was more about just actually having that sense of exploration. Like the, because of the way in which No Man's Sky is built, mm-hmm. Because all of these planets are completely unique, and in some cases, you may be apparently the only person that ever lands there and sees it. There is a different sense of exploration than I've I've experienced in in any game before. I think you get to feel like you put your stamp on it, and in fact, sometimes you will actually like actually, yeah. name things. By the way, how bad are games journalists at naming things? So bad. Well, wasn't one of the animals you came up to was just go 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 go. Yeah, and then uh, there was I think there was one called Sorry. I think someone just <laughs> named it Sorry. You named you named a fish Merlin, which I thought was quite nice. Yeah, because that was after a goldfish I won in a fair But once. yeah, that that did kind of um, confirm what we all knew anyway. The internet is gonna. Is, is going to do some weird things There's with No Man's fan, Sky. There's fantasy that was in there, though, as yes, well. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you can't just call, uh, call the fish not Okay, fish, I mean, yeah. come on. How quickly is someone going to name a wonderful, beautiful creature Hitler? Like, it will be <laughs> it will be within minutes. I can't wait to see the, like, a list of, of names that people come up with in that game. That is an important part of it, that, that, that sense that you are leading the way, and it, I think that's why exploration is the main... For me, it's kind of what I wanted. I just... Back in that game. Um, I, I play games very slowly, quite boringly, you might say. I'm the kind of guy who stops at traffic lights when I play GTA. So you, you prefer a, a, like a slower pace, is that what you think? Yeah, I prefer a slower pace. I, I, I like taking things slowly and just walking around and just kind of um, drinking it all in. And obviously this is fantastic for that. Just the sense of wonder uh, and uh, um, the amount of sights it kind of throws your way. Mm-hmm. Is just oh, the incredible. amount of times we, we had like screenshot-worthy moments. The, there was, I remember... We just you just left left the atmosphere of the planet for the first time in the ship, and then some uh, trading ships of uh, an alien race that we just encountered walked into the yeah. area, and uh, you just spent some time just like floating around them and looking oh, at these ships as they, they so so beautiful, and I love those moments past. and just things like that, and obviously there's uh, the kind of crazy animals and the, uh, and, the weird, uh, and the weird dinosaurs you can laugh at and on the on planets and everything. But also, just when you look up in the sky, you can see like the vapor trails of these uh, trade ships. You know, like, that's a real thing. They are it's real weird tra- how important that becomes. Like yeah. the the idea that you could chase after that vapor trail, find that ship, and literally watch as it goes from one system to another, and is apparently actually doing something worthwhile. Like there there is a trading system there. They are taking resources. We don't know how complex that will actually get. Yeah, but like, and if you see a trade ship, like if you just see one of those trade ships come down over and go somewhere, it's like you know pretty well there's going to be something interesting where that trade ship's landed. So yep. you're going over to go and investigate. That's that's amazing. I love that kind of stuff. It just feels like, it feels so dense with like possibility. Uh, and 
you do get that real sense of awe when you look up and when you look when you're on the surface and you look up in the sky and you're like there's so much I can do there and there's so many different ways I can approach this. That never got tired for me, basically. I can't imagine it getting tired for quite some time. One of the things uh, we should touch on, actually, is that there is some uh, writing, there's some fiction in the world of No Man's Sky that I don't think either of us were really expecting because of the, the way in which No Man's Sky is, is generated. The whole thing stems from this incredible formula that has man- allowed this rather small team to create a universe. Um, but within that, there's, there, you know, there's stuff that people have written, there is there is a story being told in a way. Uh, and we, we encountered one of the races, the, the, like, yeah. there were a handful of races scattered throughout the universe. And then I believe within that, each race has numerous factions which are generated in a similar way to the rest of the game. But when you encounter those people, they, they have things to say. In fact, you have to kind of learn their language. Yeah, I love is... that. There's kind of these amazing misunderstandings when you first meet, uh, encounter a new, uh, a new race and you don't quite get their language and you could basically gesture to them in certain ways yep. and basically you could be calling their god a dick and or, just, yeah, or, or you may be just like saying exactly what they want and they give you a new gun it's yeah. like it's a bit hit or miss but you you learn that from encountering people within that race or yeah. also like you, there are like I think there were like obelisks or something yeah, that we, we encountered kind of yeah. things that you kind of see, can decipher that kind of uh, give you a bit more little snippets of a law I guess that rewards you for you know the exploration which is part of the game and like I know we we both said that that wasn't necessarily what we were interested in but the you know you there is a sense of progression as you it was, explore it like, was a real surprise though because I wasn't expecting to have this law that runs through it but I think it's quite a smart way to bind together what is and um, famously an extremely large universe yeah and to have these kind of four or five threads could kind of coursing through it which could kind of help you piece it together so it's not just you're not just lost out there and you've kind of got things things to guide you through it like once again that we don't know exactly how far that goes and I think that is a kind of a recurring theme throughout no one's sky that like your mind runs away with possibilities when you hear things like that. You you hear these races that apparently have relationships with each other, and you want to picture like, oh, what if like two of them are warring factions? And but you like, do get that though, because I was so at one point we was uh, in the sky, and then there's these pirate ships around us, and then this pirate ship came. And if we were friends with those pirate ships, they would have helped us in that yeah. fight against. So you do you can't ally with things, and then they will and um, come and help you in a certain point. Oh, it's so hard though because your kind of imagination runs away. With yeah, it like I, I don't know if that will, if it will ever be like the the races themselves are actually having any kind of uh, complicated relationships, or it's just kind of a, uh, a a personal bar that you fill up. That's like uh, your reputation with each one, and then you can that's you know, the really do more things thing about with no them. Man's God, every time you talk about it, your kind of imagination just fills up with all these possibilities, and, and that you is kind actually of get away and part of the appeal. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's, the, that's the appeal. But then you kind of think, when you actually play this thing, how can it do anything but disappoint you? Because we've all kind of got this thing in our minds yeah. what it's going to be, and it is all this fantastical how, thing. But how I've can played the centre? I played it for an hour and I, I wasn't disappointed. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. How can the centre of the universe live up to? expectation because it, I mentioned this to Sean Murray in a very brief interview we had at the end of the day but it, it, it feels like curiosity-esque right it yeah. feels like I don't like what what could it possibly be what could it possibly be that will not be a disappointment I don't know I just hope like, just maybe just a kinder egg or something something like something, <laughs> this, this something. I, I part of me wants it to be Joan Danger free just like <laughs> After all this, how do you build your danger free? First, you have to create the entire unit. Hello, Martin Robinson. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about No Man's Sky, which is a game that unusually we've both played at this stage. Yeah, you let me touch the controller. That's yeah. Nice <laughs> Why should you play more than me? Uh, we, yeah, in total, probably like around an, almost an hour. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It was quite generous uh, the time we had of it. Well, you say that, but No Man's Sky is a game that is so... <laughs> I mean, this is part of the difficulty in, in talking about it. It is massive, yeah. and it is quite a few different things, and we're going to have to try and figure out how to how to actually define who, who it's for. That's going to be the point in this video. But I think to start with, maybe, shall we actually explain what we did in that kind of hour? Yeah, because of like so much of the conversation around this game since it was unveiled in 2013 has been about what is it? Like, yeah. What are you actually doing? <laughs> yeah, it all looks um, very impressive, but what, what is it? Yeah, I game? know, and it's weird because... It's been there front and centre. It's been all along. Like uh, Hello Games um, haven't been shy in saying what it is. In fact, I think they've gone to lengths to basically say, "Look, this is what this game is." Yeah, this is what promise. Doing. Like this is and, it. <laughs> yeah, and it's and I think it's a kind of failure of imagination on our behalf that we keep on going. But what is it you actually doing this game? What is sure. it? It's like, no, we've told you. What is it you actually do? It's like, no, we have told you. And I went back to that original um, trailer from 2013, and it's all in there. Like mm-hmm. everything's in there. It's got the crafting system. It's got this kind of weird wanted system with this, the sentinels that come after you. Um, it's got the exploration, which I think is what people have kind of uh, really latched onto yep. with this. 
but that's all there. But um, but even then, even though it's been described to us so many times before, this did feel like the first time where it kind of really crystallised, basically. From yeah, the, I mean, exactly this, this, this was the, probably the first and only hands-on that we're going to get with the game yeah. uh, ahead of actually reviewing it. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was it was interesting. I think we both went in with different levels of expectations. Both came out of it pretty impressed. Yeah, because I kind of I think after after so many years of hype. Um, and and being excited about it, that can you can only help but kind of set yourself up and go. Actually, you know what? Probably best to set my expectations quite low um, going yeah. into this. But my, my low expectations were, <laughs> were uh, surpassed uh, and then some. Obviously, the there is this main objective in the game. It's not necessarily one that everyone will pursue, but you you move towards the center of the universe, yeah. and everyone starts in I think a unique position somewhere quite a distance away from yeah. that point. And we did that in the in the demo. We started on a planet and. We kind of skipped the tutorial. Um, apparently, the, the game will have a little bit more of that. We were kind of just dropped into it just to have a muck around. And that's exactly what we did, actually. Both you and I, I, I realized pretty early on, weren't that interested in the, the combat side of the game. You're given a gun to shoot people with or to mine things with. We didn't do... I don't think I shot a single thing, actually. I know I, there, was a, there, was, there was a one platypus. I shot, I shot something to upset you at one point, I remember that. But really, yeah, that, for, <laughs> for me, that wasn't a huge priority. It wasn't, it wasn't the, the most interesting part of the game. It, for me, it was more about just actually having that sense of exploration. Like the, because of the way in which No Man's Sky is built, mm -hmm. Because all of these planets are completely unique, and in some cases, you may be apparently the only person that ever lands there and sees it. There is a different sense of exploration than I've I've experienced in in any game before. I think. I've seen things, a few things before. The sun and moon behind. Galaxies waiting to be found. Planets rich in resources. Battles to be fought. Treasures unknown. The universe you wouldn't 